Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today's procession is led by members of the school's leadership team and followed by faculty. At this time, please rise and remain standing to welcome the class of 2019. Governor Baker, members of the school committee, honors guests, family, and friends of the class of 2019, welcome to the graduation ceremony of Upper Cape Cod Regional Technical School. At this time, please remain standing as we welcome the senior class president Sarah Perry. Sarah will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you, Sarah. Please remain standing for our national anthem, which will be sung today by the UCT a cappella group. I would ask that you please join me in a moment of silence to remember those people who are no longer with us. Thank you. Please be seated. Can the class officers please come forward? Would the class advisor, Ms. Gaia, please come forward? On behalf of the class of 2019, we would like to express our gratitude to Governor Baker for taking the time out of his busy schedule to speak to us on our graduation today. We hope you enjoy these gifts that we have chosen for you as, <laughs> as a memento of your visit to Upper Cape Tech. One, which is a handmade product from our own carpentry shop. Always one. All right. Come here, guys. We would also like to give a present to our class advisor, Miss G, with a token of our appreciation. Thank you for all that you have done for us, Miss G. Thank you for the class gift. At this time, I'd like to introduce Raja Forget, Assistant Superintendent Principal of Upper Cape Cod Regional Technical School. <laughs> <laughs> 
carry this stuff out, okay? Now. Yeah, grab it, go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege for me to introduce the class of 2019 valedictorian, Joseph Rotundo. A graduate of the environmental technology shop, Joey is graduating with high honors. He is president of the National Honor Society, co-president of Skills USA, and a member of Student Council, the Interact Club, the Human Rights Club, and serves as a student advisory representative for the school committee. In 2017, he led a team of students to the Skills USA Massachusetts Gold Medal at the State Leadership Conference. and advanced to the SkillsUSA National Leadership Conference in Louisville, Kentucky, where his team earned a perfect score to beat out the best teams in the nation in the Occupational Health and Safety Competition. Joey is a resident of Sandwich and will be studying meteorology at the University of Oklahoma. Joseph Rotundo. Good afternoon, Governor Baker, Dr. Dutch, Mr. Forget, administration, representatives, teachers, family, friends, and the class of 2019. Today is the day, today is the day we've all been waiting for. Four years have come and gone, all in the blink of an eye. It's hard to believe that we are leaving our high school, which has served us faithfully over the past four years. Although it is important to reflect upon our past, it is equally important to discuss the new opportunities and careers that lie ahead. Some of us will head off to higher education, while others will head straight into the workforce or military. Some of us will live locally, while others are destined to travel far. Whatever you decide to do, and wherever you may be, I am confident in your abilities to not only succeed, but to excel. I'm impressed by each of you every day for your efforts and contributions to our class and your future careers. You have all demonstrated your commitment and dedication to your futures through your perseverance down the seemingly endless road known as high school. I know this journey was not easy and that there are many bumps and turns. We have collectively made it to the end of high school, however, at the start of a new beginning. Anyone who has known me throughout high school knows that meteorology is my passion. I love weather and the fact that it constantly changes. From severe storms to raging winds, Weather is dynamic and extremely interesting. Meteorologists, the people who study weather, are known for their interesting reputation. They aren't always praised for their accuracy. <laughs> the ironic factor is that weather enthusiasts study climate patterns because they're interested in the unpredictable, yet they seem to lack the ability to predict themselves. Most meteorologists go into their field due to their love of change since the daily forecast is never the same. I personally love this change and appreciate the differing weather patterns because they relate to my family. My family is like the unlabeled box of chocolates you see for sale on Valentine's Day. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> the only constant in my family is change, and therefore their variability has helped inspire me to pursue a career in the field of atmospheric sciences. As I prepare to begin my studies in meteorology at the University of Oklahoma, I am constantly reminded to be ready for anything as there are always sudden changes within weather patterns and the forecast. The unpredictability of the weather also applies to our futures. Today we all have a plan, but there are no guarantees that this plan will work as intended tomorrow or that it will work in the near future. Just as fierce storms are capable of catastrophic damage, life is full of curveballs and will frequently force us to face new challenges. We will not always have those bright sunny days that tell us where we are supposed to be and what we are supposed to do. Instead, 
We must find the silver lining in the cloud cover and dance in the rain to adapt to change, bettering ourselves and others. Our experiences at UCT have absolutely hands down helped prepare us for the inevitable. The technical programs we have actively participated in have taught us how to be a team and how to collectively solve problems. We, the generation of the future, need to use the collaborative skills we've learned in high school to address global problems such as climate change, plastic pollution, socioeconomic imbalance, and an ever-changing workforce. Because these challenges do not come with one simple solution, a collective effort must be made to resolve the many issues our society faces. A collective effort is made not by one talented individual, similar to how a good forecast is made by a team of meteorologists. A global problem cannot be solved through one advocate, but rather through the efforts of many well-informed individuals. Working together, we must accept the challenge of becoming well-informed individuals in an effort to build a bright future for ourselves and the generations that follow us. These challenging problems must be solved with the help of successful individuals. I know that you will all be successful, as you have been over the past four years. Talking with my peers, we all have varying skill sets, and we each define success in our own unique ways. To Sarah Perry, a senior in horticulture, success is when you're happy with your end result. Sarah feels successful after teaching her younger peers how to create floral arrangements for the general public to purchase. Delaney Goss, a senior in culinary arts, describes success as an achievement usually based on a goal, a type of growth. Delaney feels successful after she has helped advocate for women's rights through her local art shows. And Jillian Taylor, a senior in environmental science and technology, describes success as the point where one or accomplishes a task or goal to the best of their ability, meeting both internal and external expectations. Jillian felt successful through her recycling contributions to help prevent plastic pollution. You each define success in your own unique way. More importantly, you've each experienced successes and will continue to do so in the future. With each success, remember those who helped you along the way and how your success can better benefit our communities. I thank our teachers, family, and friends who supported us with our education and provided us with amazing opportunities. They have always taught us to help others and the importance of giving back to our community. Whatever your definition of success may be, I encourage each and every one of you to stick to your goals in pursuit of a better future for all individuals. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, the purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you lived and lived well. I know that you will all meet Emerson's challenge and use your skills and talents to make a difference within the world. Stick to your goals and you can go anywhere you deem possible. I'm proud of your accomplishments and cannot wait to hear your success stories. Congratulations and good luck, class of 2019. At this time, I would like to introduce this year's outstanding vocational student, Madison Brunn. A graduate from the Health Technology Shop, Madison has demonstrated her leadership skills throughout her high school career. In addition to achieving high honors while at UCT, she has been an active participant in the Drama Club, the Art Club, the Interact Club, Skills USA, and Student Council. Additionally, she has worked at a cooperative education position at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital for the past year as a certified nursing assistant. This year's outstanding vocational student is from the town of Sandwich and will continue her education at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, where she is majoring in nursing. Madison Brunn. Good afternoon, family, friends, faculty, administration, Governor Baker, and fellow graduates. My name is Madison Brunn, and I have the privilege of speaking to you all on behalf of the class of 2019. As students, we spent countless nights staying up late, working on endless projects, and wishing that graduation would come faster. But we never thought we would actually get here, graduating and on our way to college, the military, or into the workforce. It's crazy to think that after today, we will be leaving the place we spent the last four years of our lives in. Everyone always tells you that high school goes by quicker than you'd think, but you never believe them until you're here, walking across the stage and wondering where the past four years have gone. 
I still remember when I was a little kid trying to be all grown up like my mom. I would sneak into her closet and try on her shoes, waiting for the day that they would finally fit me. I would go through all her clothes, dreaming of the day we could share them. I even once stole her brush and got it stuck in my hair. I definitely lost a good amount of hair that day, and I can safely say she was not pleased. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> when I was draped in my mother's clothing, drowning in her shoes that were several sizes too big, I used to think that that's what being an adult felt like. It was pure bliss, and I could not wait to grow up. But now we're here, graduating from high school and making our way into the real world. And while I'm sure we are all very excited to finally be done, it's also pretty nerve-wracking. High school was the place where we learned who we are, what interests us, and where we want to go in life. Of course, high school had its ups and downs, but the memories we have made over these past four years are going to be a part of our lives forever. Some of us have found lifelong friends, careers that we're passionate about, or simply teachers that made the seemingly endless work a little bit better. Whichever may be the case for you, we all have something in common. We made it. Most of us came into high school with only a few friends from our sending schools, terrified by the fact that we would be surrounded by all new people from five different towns. But we quickly learned in the exploratory program that everyone was just as nervous as we were ourselves. In the exploratory program, we were exposed to all different people that we might not normally have met within our regular academic classes. And once we chose our shops, we were able to meet people that shared our interests. We continued to form and grow friendships, meeting more and more people with each passing year. Fast forward to September of our senior year. We were so close to finishing, yet graduation seemed so far away. Throughout our four years, we have all experienced and been through so much. We've lost old friendships and formed new ones, changed our minds about our career paths countless times, and had nights where all we wanted to do was give up. Senioritis definitely kicked in for just about every one of us, especially as the feeling of freedom got closer and closer. Simple assignments seemed to take forever to complete, and we could barely wait to get here, receiving our diplomas and celebrating our accomplishments. But all of the struggles, hard work, and determination paid off because here we are, walking across the stage and accepting our diplomas. All of the college and scholarship applications, the military testing, and the job searching was worth it because here we are, we made it. That finish line that seemed miles away, the one we thought we would never reach, is finally here. All of the essays, homework assignments, and the copious amounts of scantrons made it feel as though we would never make it. But something that once felt so far away now feels as though it went by in no time at all. Life is kind of funny in that sense. Time either feels as though it's standing still or as if it's gone within a moment's notice. And while we made a lot of memories, we still have so many more to make. So many more things to learn, people to meet, and adventures to go on. While today signifies us all going our separate ways, all of our lives have been intertwined one way or another. Perhaps in 20 years, you'll run into an old high school friend at the grocery store, and the two of you will catch up on all that's happened since you've graduated. Or perhaps you plan on moving across the country, eager to make a new life for yourselves. Regardless, we have all met people that have changed our lives, and for that I will forever be grateful. Although we are all going our separate ways, I would like to thank everyone for the impact they have had on not only myself, but other students and faculty as well. While many of us are moving forward into uncertainty, I would like to leave you all with a quote from Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> the most important thing in your life is to live your life with integrity and to not give in to peer pressure to try to be something that you're not. I wish all of you luck finding what makes you happy, and I hope that everyone is able to move forward in a positive manner. Every single one of you deserves to find your niche, and I wish everyone luck in doing so. And with that, I'd like to say congratulations to the class of 2019. We finally made it. Good luck to everyone, and thank you again. <laughs> At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Robert Dutch. Good afternoon. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to the graduation ceremony of the class of 2019. I would specifically like to welcome our many guests, Representative Randy Hunt, The selectmen from the towns of Bourne, Falmouth, Marion, Sandwich, and Wareham, if you'd please stand. They're behind you.
I would also like to thank our former superintendent, David Sampson Sr., and the school committee member for his presence here today as well. <laughs> thank you to our school committee for your continued support of vocational technical education at Upper Cape Tech. And finally, most importantly, thank you to the faculty of Upper Cape Tech who makes everything possible for our students and ensures their success through this path that we call high school. It is my honor to introduce our commencement speaker, who is here to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates as well as the beginning of our 50th year of providing varied, high-quality opportunities for career education to the Upper Cape Cod communities. Governor Charlie Baker began his second term as the 72nd Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in January of 2019. Throughout his tenure as Governor, he has continually been an effective leader through his ability to foster bipartisanship that has led to a result-driven agenda. Governor Baker continues to assure that Massachusetts is the national leader in education, having signed four budgets and one shortly, featuring significant investments in education, increasing local Chapter 70 education aid, adding 4,000 seats, and supporting $75 million in equipment upgrades to the state's vocational and technical schools, including over $1.3 million to Upper Cape Tech. <laughs> Governor Baker also recognizes the difficulties the high costs of college create for students and families and has taken steps to make it more affordable to attend the state's public colleges and universities, including the Commonwealth Commitment Program and expanded community college scholarship funding. He has also expanded early college opportunities for high school students as a means of decreasing costs and reducing other impediments to college. Through his Workforce Skills Cabinet, he has demonstrated his recognition of the important relationship between education, workforce development, and economic development. As a result of his leadership and the Cabinet's efforts, more than 200,000 jobs have been added since 2015, and more people are working now than at any time in state history. Governor Baker also recognizes the challenges faced by many, particularly here on Cape Cod, related to the opioid and heroin epidemic. Schools are not exempt from the toll this takes on the education system directly or indirectly. Governor Baker has doubled spending on prevention, education, treatment, and recovery, and since 2017, the Commonwealth has seen overdose deaths drop and families given hope. Please join me in welcoming Governor Charlie Baker. Thank you very much, Dr. Dutch. To our elected officials, administrators, and faculty of UCT, to the graduates, to the parents, friends, and neighbors of the class of 2019, I'm honored to be here today. I would like to ask the kids to just quickly stand up, and turn around, and give your parents, your relatives, and your friends a round of applause. <laughs> Well done. In my very biased opinion, Massachusetts has the best career and technical high schools in the country, and UCT is among the very best of the very best. By every measure, graduation rates, test scores, GPAs, student engagement, co-op programming, Massachusetts career and technical schools rock. True confessions have been to three of my own graduations, high school, college, 
and graduate school. I don't remember who spoke at my high school graduation. <laughs> then German Chancellor Helmut Kohl spoke at my college graduation. I don't remember anything that he said. <laughs> and General Motors CEO Roger Smith spoke at my business school graduation, and I don't remember anything he said either. So I recognize the extremely high bar that I have to climb over today to say something worthwhile. <laughs> Let me start with this. We are all proud of you. The path, whichever one was yours, was not a cakewalk. You were expected to perform, and you did. Good for you. But now you turn the page and begin to write the next chapter of your life. This one will be more complicated as it should be. You're young adults, and the choices you make will be, more so than ever before, yours and yours alone. The consequences in both directions will belong to you as well. So do us all a favor and keep these three rules in mind. Rule number one, make good choices. The parents usually like that one a lot. It seems simple enough, but believe me, it won't be. I can almost guarantee that at some point in the next few years, you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and say something like, what was I thinking? The answer will be that you weren't. Many years ago, I was at a party when I was a little older than you are now. We were in somebody's basement that had a low ceiling. One thing led to another. And the next thing I knew, we were all jumping up and hitting the ceiling tiles with our heads. <laughs> we weren't breaking them, just dislodging them. Anyway, I went up for the fourth or fifth time when it was my turn, and I smashed my head into a beam in the ceiling <laughs> that ran right above the ceiling tiles. I saw stars, got a bump on my head that was sore for over a month. It was darn lucky I didn't break my neck. This was an incredibly bad choice. <laughs> and to this day, I thank God I only paid the price of major embarrassment and a really bad headache. In retrospect, I probably deserved a lot worse. Rule number two, don't be afraid to try new things. Now, with respect to rule number two, remember rule number one. <laughs> don't try stupid new things. Try smart new things. Force yourself to think harder, work harder, try harder than you have before. Reach for something that matters. Growth is about getting outside your comfort zone and ultimately being okay with that. I'm sure you've all heard of the famous artist Michelangelo. His works will live on forever. Thousands of years after his death, people still flock to see his work. He said one time that the greater challenge for most, greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. Put more simply, find your life's purpose and then stretch yourself. The first time I ran for governor in 2010 against former Governor Deval Patrick, I lost badly. I wasn't a very good candidate. I was way outside my comfort zone, and it showed. I wasn't ready to be governor. My wife Lauren and I spent a lot of time talking about what went right and what went wrong after that first race. I rewatched the TV debates. I talked to people in the media who covered the race, and I listened to my friends go on and on and on and on and on and on about all the things I did wrong. At times it was exhausting and depressing. But we learned a lot and apparently our kids did too. After that very public defeat, all three of our children, Charlie, AJ, and Caroline, said, that, said to me that watching me lose made them less afraid to fail. One of them put it simply, Dad, you tried, you failed, and the next morning, life went on. You and Mom talked about it, and you moved on. It was a real lesson for all of us.
Now, not exactly the outcome I was hoping for, but the lesson once learned was a good one. It's okay to get outside your comfort zone. Which brings me to rule number three. <laughs> that was actually very appropriate, because rule number three is learn how to put down your phone. Now, I take great comfort in the fact that our children are all in their 20s. They grew up before five-year-olds had smartphones and before social media changed, well, everything. There are probably some positives associated with social media and smartphones. Keeping up with real friends. Timely updates about projects at work. Photo sharing from trips, vacations, and fun events. And access to boatloads of information that required weeks of study in the library to access back in the day. But most of what comes flying over social media is noise. And you need to know that. It's not the real world. The real world is here and now. It's your parents, your family, your teachers, your friends, and your coworkers. The ones who find a way to be physically, emotionally, and personally present with you whenever they're with you. They would stand in front of a moving vehicle to save your life. They lie awake at night, wondering and worrying about how you're doing and what they can do to support you as you grow into adulthood. They want you to be strong, happy, diligent, kind, and empathetic. They hope the lessons they've taught you and the support they've offered will help you be a good person as you get older. And they feel this way because they connect with you in the most fundamental way of all, by virtue of your collective humanity. Believe it or not, your phone has no humanity. It's a tool, plain and simple. It's not your friend. It's not your family. It cannot and it does not love you. <laughs> and it feeds on dis dis distance, anonymity, and outrage. Enormous amounts of social media involve people saying and doing things they would never dream of doing if they were standing right in front of you. It enables anger and bravado, much of which is uninformed or deliberately deceitful. It is the nonsense that comes when you separate real life consequences from actions and words. It is not real. Several years ago, Lauren and I had to do what may be the most difficult thing we ever do as governor and first lady. We met a family at Logan Airport that was waiting for their son and their brother to come home from Afghanistan. Combat medic John Dawson was 22 years old when he died in Afghanistan in April of 2015. He was from Whitensville, Mass., and he was a graduate of Blackstone Valley Vocational and Technical School. He went to college but dropped out to enroll in the Army because he wanted to become a medic. He was, by all accounts, a great kid. When Lauren and I met his parents and his sister, they talked about the choices he made and how proud he was to wear that uniform and about his desire to do something more for his country and about their determination to be positive in the face of something as brutal as the loss of their beloved son and brother. I see this family at least once a year, and their continued optimism in the face of such shuddering tragedy will always stay with me. Now their life is real, just like yours. The choices you make, they will be real. The new things you try, they will be real, and they will mold you into the adult you will become. Now, you start today as graduates of a terrific institution. You have a strong foundation on which to build a pur purposeful and positive life. Your parents are proud of you, and so are your teachers, your friends, and your neighbors. They watched you grow up from diapers to backpacks, from footy jammies to t-shirts and jeans, from your first steps 
to your driver's license. They believe in you, they believe in your humanity, and they dream big things for you. They will root for you, they will pick you up when you fall down, and they love you. So make good decisions, try new things, remembering rule number one, stretch yourselves, and for crying out loud, put down your phone. God bless and good luck. Thank you, Governor Baker. It has been an honor for our graduates as well as our families and friends to have you speak at this momentous occasion. It truly has made today an unforgettable event for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> On Thursday, May 16th, students receiving academic scholarships and technical tool awards were recognized for their achievements. Scholarships and tool award recipients are listed in your program. Would all students who were recognized during our evening of excellence for Skills USA as well as FFA please stand? <laughs> for our graduates who will be entering into military service, Please stand at this time and be recognized. Thank you. <laughs> at this time, I would like to introduce our Dean of Students, Mr. James McHugh. for the part that our graduates got all dressed up for, Mr. McHugh. Heather Anderson. Sarah Marie Barrows. Shakira Ann Bonneau. Jenna Elizabeth Borden, high honors. Sydney Joy Buford. <laughs> Samantha Elizabeth Chalmers, high honors. <laughs> Kaylin Marie Cook. <laughs> Taylor Elizabeth Crippen. Christine Ann DiStefano, National Honor Society, high honors. <laughs> Lily Ann DuBerger. <laughs> Michelle Colleen Dutra. <laughs> Jocelyn Deirdre Eddy.
Madison Faye Brunn. High honors. Wallace Lenwood Alden. <laughs> Jeffrey Joseph Alford, honors. John Michael Joseph Ballard. <laughs> Joshua Corey Barber. Matthew James Berry. Isaiah Barry Borges. Matthew Lawrence Bridge. Matthew Joseph Brunn. Benjamin James Candeloro. Robert Carl Cannon. Tanner Bryce Kerrig. Paul Logan Cucci. <laughs> Joseph Fortunato Rotundo, National Honor Society, high honors. Courtney Marie Enos. <laughs> Jessica Marie Esdale. Madison Lee Fletcher, high honors. <laughs> Serena Judith Riley Fox. <laughs> Haley St. John Garrity. <laughs> Marissa Therese Garrity Honors. Shayez Janae Lynn Gomes. Noye Mia Elise Gordon.
Delaney Isabella Goss, National Honor Society, High Honors. Julia Tanner Hammond. Angela Rose Hanscom. Alexandra Nicole Healy. Cheyenne J. Lee Jenny. Jonathan Theodore Churchill. Bakai Baptiste Sincata. <laughs> Jacob Steven Sincata. Cameron Thomas Cliff. Alexander Gordon Cook. Alexander Scott Coraleo. Toby David Del Signore. Samuel Theodos Damasi. <laughs> Daniel Christopher Dinan. <laughs> Anthony Raymond De Pasquale. Matthew Joseph DePietro. John Patrick Doucette. Miles Edmund Duarte. Andrea D. Jones. <laughs> Larissa Assis Kelleher. Megan Clear Lamasney. <laughs> Michaela Jean Lawrence. <laughs> Kayla Michelle Lowe. <laughs> Victoria. Jean Mackey. <laughs> Olivia Lee Matson. <laughs> S 
Serafina Jane McGrath. Emma Lee Melconian. <laughs> Kayla Rose Patrico. <laughs> Ruby Louise Palagio, National Honor Society, <laughs> honors. Lady Dorlinda Rose Perkins. <laughs> Caroline Diane Perry. Abraham Apollinar Duval. Tyler James Earl. Tristan Jordan Eccles. Jonathan Marshall Fistori. Isaiah Jacob Fosky. <laughs> McLeod Thomas Fox, I honors. <laughs> Devin Michael Gallagher. William Garcia O'Leary. Christopher George, high honors. Anthony Joseph Georgopoulos. Robert Giroux. Eric Gonzalez. <laughs> Sarah Carol Perry. Paige Catherine Perbilla, honors. <laughs> Christiana Lee Robbins. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Rose. Morgan Racine Santos. Thank you. 
Julianne Smith. Lillian Marie Stommer. Patricia Elizabeth Stewart. Cameron Weaver Thornell. Catherine Ann Tropiano. Jaden Rose Tusi. Sade Renee Van Leer, high honors. Jillian Nicole Taylor, National Honor Society, high honors. Trajan James Gonzalez. James Foster Gracie. Ethan James Harder. Javon O'Dane Houghton. Harrison Robert Hunt. Hayden Robert Hunt. <laughs> Eric Raiden King. Christopher Robert Kinsella. Charlie Moffitt Kleindienst. Joseph Francis Kulik. <laughs> Carter Allen Layton. <laughs> Jared Russell Lewis. <laughs> Nolan Ferguson Layman. Jordan Riley Vermilia. Charlize Elizabeth Winward. Dustin Wayne Smith. Jason Michael Speroni.
Philip Olin Sprague. Jackson Clark St. Don. Hunter James Stowe. Mitchell James Stroney. Studley Honors. <laughs> Aiden William Edward Sullivan. <laughs> Gary John Taggart. <laughs> Cody Brian Texera. Caleb Sylvia, National Honor Society, high honors. Zachary Michael Paticos. William Matt McGinnis. <laughs> Tyler Patrick Marshall Honors. <laughs> Joseph Leo McArdle. <laughs> Jonathan Daniel McCarthy. Patrick Ryan McMahon. <laughs> Colby Patrick McMorrow. <laughs> Ryan Francis Mello. <laughs> Jordan James Mello. Cashel Jacob Moore. Christopher Paul Morris. Carl Roger Nicholas Jr. Wilfred Noel Willett, honors. Tucker Joseph Thomas, honors. Congratulations, Tucker. 
James Michael Tokars. John Colin Venable. James Joseph Washburn Haskell. Jared Michael Westgate. Daniel James Willett. Rodane Iniko Williams. Samuel Robert Williams. Joshua Charles Winarski. Jack Woods. <laughs> Jeremy Robert Wurzberger. Nathan James Yogis. Lawrence Russell Purdy's Cash. Valentino Paul Patron. <laughs> Michael Andrew Poulin, honors. <laughs> Mario Joseph Ricci. <laughs> Christopher James Rogers, high honors. Tristan Ernest Rose. <laughs> David Alexander Roselle. <laughs> Cade Schofield. Xavier Joseph Cicada. <laughs> Jacob Thomas Shaw. <laughs> Vincent Edward Silva Pierce. <laughs> Cameron Thomas Smith. Darren Richard Smith.
Would the class officers please come forward and could I please have the rest of the graduates stand? Graduates of the class of 2019, this is your day. Your life begins now. There is a sign that I have hanging in my home, and I look at it every day, and it reads, at water's edge, life begins. Today, you are at the water's edge. You can dive right in, or you can enter slowly, testing the water as you go. What matters is that you have the knowledge the skills, and the foundation to stay afloat. At this time, graduates, move your tassels from the right to the left. <laughs> Class officers, please return to your seats. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Class of 2019, congratulations.